This is Tim Albright with Aviation Nation, live at ISC 2017 with Randy Lee from Revo Labs. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Actually, thank you. Uh, you, you guys uh, were purchased, Revo Labs was purchased a couple years ago mm -hmm. by Yamaha. Yes, we were. Um, that has got, given you guys some interesting, not only insight, but some ability to do some things a little a bit um, that you weren't able to do before the purchase. One of the things that you're showing this year um, is a USB wireless telephone. Yes. Talk about that for a second and how that, you know, why show it, you know, why mm -hmm. show it here in Amsterdam, but also what that helps your clients do. Well, it's a USB conference phone. Okay. It does have a, a Bluetooth connection for wireless connectivity. This phone is a beautiful small phone that you can run and just pick up from the table, put it in another space. You may have it set up so at a central station so that when people come into these conference rooms, they can pick it up from the admin at the place uh, and bring it to their room and get great audio out of it. It's got a good echo canceller, uh, some of the highest performing audio and volume you'll get out of a USB phone. So you don't have to be huddled around that phone trying to yell into it and speak into it and hear other people. You can sit back from it a little bit more natural. Setting. Exactly. It's a good pickup range in the mic, about three meters. Oh, wow. So there's plenty of space in there and it's got the volume, even if it's just powered off a USB cable, to get, uh, to hear every word. All right. A couple other things you're showing. Uh, one is a two-channel wireless mic system. Yes. Um, you said before that that it that came directly out of your, your client's request. Mm -hmm. uh, so first talk about the wireless mic system itself, and then we'll get into to how folks can request some stuff from you guys. Okay. Well, our wireless mic system is actually based off our executive elite system. So we use the same deck technology, the uh, AES-256 encryption, and that is system is really geared towards the education space. Two channels, so that usually you'll get one channel being used at a lectern or a wireless, uh, lapel. Uh, yeah, a wireless uh, handheld mic, okay. about, a wireless lapel mic, excuse me, uh, that people walk around and talk with. For, and then another one that could be used as a, maybe a TA4 adapter for a handheld mic that you might pass around the audience for question and answer sessions. But it's really meant for voice uplift, lecture recording, lecture capture, uh, and remote learning capabilities. Now we got that, uh, this design, this information, from the uh, heads of media services at, at colleges and universities who gave us feedback that as they enter this next refresh cycle of equipment, they wanted to see managed audio so that they could run uh, all the audio systems throughout their campus from one base station. And what this allows them to do is, is monitor which mics are being used in which stations, where it's going to be recorded, so if they have all their networked audio right, they can feed it into their data capture systems you know, for subsequent playback, or for streaming live for a live online courses. They come to us because actually we go out and reach out to them as well. We go out uh, with our product managers go and visit these people. Um, our field sales engineers go out. We always go out to make sure that they're happy with the equipment is yeah. performing uh, properly. Uh, and our sales engine and our sales managers who go out and talk to the accounts in general and belong to some of the organizations like SCOMS in the UK, SCH, OMS. Uh, they're actually giving a series of lectures here. And these guys have great ideas of what they want to do in their audio space. So it's really a two-way communication. We'll reach out to them, but they also come to us when they have something to say, can this equipment do this? How do we make it do this? And we say, well, if we can't do it now, we're going to definitely put in our roadmap for future education, because education is a great space for us. Well, and you, so talk about that for a second, because you know, whether it's, it's you going out to them and finding out some, some pain points that they have, mm -hmm. or them saying, you know, them raising their hands saying, hey, hey, hey Revo, can you make this? Let's say that, that you, you find out this week, right, at mm -hmm. ISC that you know, they're, they're asking for whatever the next feature is. What does that roadmap look like? You guys will go back, back to your offices and say, you know what, here's two or three or four or five ideas that we have. How long then before that becomes a product? It's always tricky talking about future products it, and it products. Is, it is. And but in general, I mean, in general yeah. we come home you know, from these shows, we always have post-show meetings, and yeah. we pull in all the ideas, uh, as well as during the year when the ideas come in from the from the field, we have our product roadmap. So the the variation uh, variance in length that it takes to develop something really depends on is it going to be a new hardware product, or is it a software capability that we can program and upload into the firmware okay. running our system. Uh, for instance, as we work through the AVB uh, or TSN now uh, applications, you know we can upload new capabilities, new control capabilities 
that people want to see. Right? We, must, we want to see have a control console into our system and say, I'd like to be able to monitor, well, they can already monitor mute and unmute and volume and all that, but it's say uh, uh, command and control for uh, executive mute, right? So someone yeah. hits a button, everything just turns off except for the executive. We then bring it back in, in timeline, right? We always, it's, it's the same scope, schedule, resources that you get with any project development system. What is it going to do? What's the payback for the customer? Where do we put it in the existing queue and how does it impact other projects? Uh, so we do some careful planning. Also because we're now working uh, under, the Yam under the aegis of Yamaha, we have to do our, our corporate development systems uh, and QA work through the Yamaha QA system so that uh, when the product comes out, it can have a Yamaha brand on it. And we want to make sure that it fits the Yamaha quality standards, uh, but we also have to understand the impact on other products. Do we rush something through because it's a quick fix that someone really needs, uh, or is it something we can cycle in later on uh, as a future product? New hardware products take probably the shortest is 14 to 16 months, uh, you know, from start to finish, because once you, from the concept to finish delivery, uh, unless it's a rest project, of course, uh, and then can take up to 24 months for some of the more complicated systems. Okay, so 16 months to possibly two years on the, on the, on the offset. So. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned uh, ABB. Um, you guys were, are, are a big, heavily involved in ABB. Mm -hmm. Yamaha is heavily involved in Dante. Mm -hmm. Talk for a second about how those two worlds kind of work together. Well, it's all about networked audio, right? People are trying to get data from point A to point D uh, with low latency and, and to get both audio and video, because I understand Dante is now adding video. That may be wrong. <laughs> so don't quote me on that. No. Uh, but with Yamaha has been a longtime supporter of Dante and had the vision early on seeing that, that networked audio was going to be a future capability that everyone was going to want. So with that, uh, they developed a line of equipment, amplifiers, um, DSPs, other speaker types. Sound mixers. Every, yeah, sound mixers, mixing boards, everything kind of geared towards that. Uh, and then they bought us. And Revo Labs has been a longtime supporter of, of AVB. We, our vision is that in the future there's going to be a lot more AVB uh, applications and processes coming on uh, as this stuff gets uh, rolled out and promulgated in the field, that uh, AVB will be something in the future that will really challenge Dante. And so now that we have Yamaha and Revo Labs actually covering both sides of the field, uh, we think that either way people go, we'll have a solution for them. So for instance, on our, on our stand today, uh, we've got two stations running. We've got a, a Yamaha station running Dante network uh, from a deep, so we have our executive lead wireless mic system plugged into the Dante, or to the Dante DSP, plugged into an amplifier, plugged into speakers, so we have a running Dante station. And then uh, on the other side of the booth, we have an AVB station running with our Executive Elite wireless mic system, uh, running AVB directly into a Cisco catalyst switch, uh, running from there into a Biamp to Sierra Forte, okay. uh, all running AVB as a, as a demo product. So whatever the application is going to be, we want to be able to cover that for networked audio, because networked audio is going to be the future. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, Randy Lee, thanks. thank you so much. How do people find out more about Revo Labs? Well, if they go to www.revolabs.com, uh, that's a great place to start. We're always on the web, and stop by our booth. We're at a stand 11-D113. Right, very good, Randy Lee uh, from Revo Labs. My name is Tim Albright. For more information about us, go to avnation.tv.